I gotta start up this video again, man. I know that's why I was just rambling while you were doing right. anything. Let's do this thing here. Uh, Shock Monkey Radio is entertainment for adults, by adults, and the views and opinions expressed here do not reflect upon FXBG Public Radio or its sponsors. For additional information, please refer to the United States Bill of Rights. Stand warned. Uh, the software updated recently, and it's been a pain in the butt. It's been like, it, it won't go a full hour without closing out. There we go. So I do Back up and run. Radio. Yeah, man, anyway, I'll start at the beginning here. That time of year again, to get offended by Halloween costumes. Um, yeah, cultural appropriation and racism. These are two terms that suck the fun out of everything. Halloween was supposed to be the one time of year that anyone could dress up as a tranny. And now that you people are doing it full time, no one can dress in drag? Unless you're actually a tranny. Hey, do you remember that music video, uh, I Want to Break Free by Queen? Yes. Where the entire band is dressed up in drag? Yeah. Are, are trannies offended by that video? Because I think, I'm pretty sure that that, song and that video is all about them do you not think though like some of the guys in queen are probably probably dressing as drag by now just on a daily basis who came up with that idea in the band it was freddie mercury <laughs> i didn't say him specifically i said his band man the band, you gotta you got you the whole in the band, band into it yeah the one of them, somebody in the band was like yo we could dress up like women mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how about, I Miss, feel how about like Mrs. Doubtfire? Does that piss off the trannies? Mrs. Doubtfire is a great movie, dude. That's I right. love that movie. That's right. It is a good movie. Reference the shit out of Mrs. Doubtfire. It's very kind of gays and everything. So what's the big deal? He wasn't doing anything. But it had nothing to do with being gay. I That's think, right. I think, though, if you don't think that someone... If you think you should be able to dress however you want to, then I don't think that you should be able to tell someone else they can't. And that's the thing. You can't do it too because you're not. You're doing it as a, and it's not a joke. No one's making fun of you. They're yeah. not making fun of you. It was a. It's a costume. I was dressing up because this is the one day a year that I get to dress up. Everyone's exactly. a drag on Halloween because Anyone everybody's putting on a costume. That's the point. That's the point of Halloween. Yeah, you're all. Everyone's gonna dress up in a costume. Yeah. Is the word. Yeah. So no one can dress in drag except you. But why would you call it drag? That's you calling it drag because that's your opinion of of what that is. To this is a costume for Halloween to to the person that's wearing it. You're yeah. like I'm not I'm not dressing up like a woman because I want to dress up like a woman. I thought the character was and it would be funny. That's the thing. We were having fun because Halloween is a fun night. Yeah. Celebration, it's a party. For people who dress up as goofy fucking things, that's the whole point of it. Yeah, so you whiny trannies, you know, fuck you and your tuck penis. <laughs> anyway. Oh, good thing you did the fucking warning. And, right and why, and, and no one, that's why I did the warning, dude. I know, yeah. And, uh, and so no one can dress like a Native American? Why? Yeah. Native American culture is part of American culture. All right, you idiots who are offended by Native American costumes need to be strafed by a Chinook and Apache helicopters. Yeah. Think about that one. I know. I got it. That's why that one's fucked up, I guess. Because we killed all of them. So I guess that maybe that's why. They're like, oh, that's offensive. Y'all killed all of us. Now you're going to dress up like us? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's their complaint. Yeah, I get that one. I guess that one's, that one's all right. No. But the other ones don't no. make sense to me. Don't censor anyone. I mean, I'm not saying censor. But I'm not saying that I want to wear a Native American costume. I'm I just saying, saying that nobody, some are, nobody should tell me I what I can and can't see, wear on Halloween. I can see why they, like the Native American people would be offended by it. And blackface. Let's talk about blackface. All right. Blackface is my favorite. Um, a, a black plastic pumpkin with a face on it is apparently more offensive than Justin Trudeau or Ralph, Ralph Northam. In actual blackface? Do you remember this? This happened this year. Yeah, over the I past few months. These He's pictures Canadian. of Justin Trudeau and Ralph Northam in blackface. But one of them's Canadian. so that Yeah, one count. of them's Canadian and liberal. And one of them's liberal and American. Yeah. So it's okay with them. Instead, they got pissed off at a bunch of plastic things at Walmart. Uh, I didn't see that. You didn't I see did. that? Where they're like, Walmart had like these little black pumpkins with a little pumpkin face on it. And people say, that looks like blackface. They should, and they pulled it off the shelves. Ah, uh, that's fucked up. Yes. That's yes, up. it is. That's that's intense, yeah. I uh, The thing with blackface is people in America 
are more more offended because we don't understand that other countries don't have the same racism that we have. Yeah, where it's, it's worse not than other countries. But even like Canada, like Canada is not like they like they have. Oh, there's a whole bunch of race wars about white white people and black people. Because there's very few black people. In but Canada. that's why. So people in Canada don't care. Nobody, nobody in Canada was like, yo, that guy was wearing blackface. That was racist. They're not like we've been dealing with whatever the the old slavery issue here that you guys go through is yeah okay. You guys have dealt with slavery. Our, that's not our shit. That's your, don't put that on us, Bobby. Did you put that on me, Ricky Bobby? That's what they're like, dude. You, it's, you ever been to Canada? Have I ever been to Canada? No. Drake's from Canada. He's black. You ever been to Europe? Yes. It's way racist in Europe. But they're more racist if you're not from based off of other things. No, they're racist about people on the other side of the mountain. They don't like each other for different reasons, not because of your color. They're like, I don't like the shit that you be doing. They don't care if you're black or white. They're just, they have mixed races over there where they're like, yeah. you guys are just Muslims. I don't like what you believe with your shit. We have the same it's not because you're black or white it's because we don't like your beliefs and we fucking don't think you should be able to do whatever you want to do with all that shit that you're thinking over there well like the way you think we had like oh people are racist because there used to be slavery and you're like but you could still say you could disagree with somebody from a different race because you don't like their opinion it doesn't mean that you're racist you're just like i don't like the way that guy thinks think, but the I people are confused there, about racism in america we have to have a talk off the air about that we can. I don't know. You know. Maybe we'll talk about it off the air. I'm a mixed guy, so I look at it differently. Yeah, I guess. So <laughs> I've seen both sides. There's like the whole thing where I'm like, yeah, I get everybody be doing that kind of crazy shit. People trying to contact me. You know, I'm doing a show. So, um, yeah. So, uh, you people pissed off about uh, a, a plastic pumpkin, but not Ralph Northam or Justin Trudeau. Um, get the fuck out of here. You know, quit. Stop trying to ruin. Damn this. Oh, what a day. What a day. What a day. Yeah, I got to find my place again. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah, get the fuck out of here. You trying to ruin everyone else's good time because you're a miserable cunt? You can't stand to see anyone else having fun? So what are you dressing up for as Halloween? <laughs> I'm dressing up as Nick as always. <laughs> Speaking of Nick as always, we got a section here set aside for Nick's picks. What do you got going on? Oh, well, this Saturday we started Grizzly season, so make sure you guys go out there. Fredericksburg Grizzlies, your professional ABA basketball team in the Fredericksburg area. Um, first game of the season is Saturday. I think that's at um, Riverbend. So make sure you guys come out at 7 o'clock and uh, root for the team. They, they were doing pretty good at the scrimmage. We still lost, but they're a better team. It's a scrimmage. We were, it was, it's set up different. Doesn't count. Um, also, I'd like to... I would like to next pick for this week. You got to see this video of this New York cop punching this kid in the face, knocked him out. And they're like, it's a mob. It's just, it's really funny because it's like a mob of people in the subway. And apparently the cops had already been like doing their thing. Like they were arresting people, you know, like when they're pushing people through the crowd and stuff. Right. And they're like getting the people out of there that they arrested and one of the kids gets pushed out of the way and a cop comes from out of the frame. Like, I guess he had just got there and didn't know what was happening and just Superman punches this dude right in the face and it ends up being a teenage kid, but he knocked him out and just out of nowhere, boom, like out of the frame. Everyone else is just like doing their thing. Like, Hey, get out of the way. Get out. And just, this guy just comes in like, boom, knocks this kid out. Um, wow. and then he tries to fight another kid and then. The NYPD police department put out their statement and they were like, there was an incident last night where two teen girls were getting in a fight. They were apprehended and arrested. Um, and then another altercation broke out while this was happening. Those two guys were arrested. Somebody else got arrested based off of this. And apparently uh, one of our officers punched the, uh, punched two teen, also one of our officers punched two teenagers in the face like during, during the exit. We don't know why he did that, but he's on administrative leave. Until I we should can hope so. Figure it out. But it was, it was as funny as they're like, yeah, everything. Like we had everything taken. Like what did, what were you doing, dude? That's that's what I mean. It's like you got to understand the problem with cops is that they're people. They usually stick with each other though, where they're like, we're gonna do an investigation to see. They were like, yo, no, not anymore. 
We like what did you? Why did you do? What are you doing, Jerry? Like well, why are you just I coming mean, in punching people? If you're straight up wrong, I mean, in this day and age, when it comes to police police officers, if you're straight up wrong, you know they're gonna yeah, we're gonna put you on leave, dude. It's just funny because they were like, we had everything taken care of. Like you got here late, and it because there's a big crowd, you think like yeah, everyone's one, fighting. And one you're like, smart mouth, and the dude snaps, and next thing he, you know, you're on administrative leave. He just wasn't there. They were already had arrested the people, so they'd mm. already taken care of the situation. They were just trying to get them out. Of there and yeah. then so he he just sees them in a crowd of people i guess in panic it just boosh, right on the dude it was so it was so funny because they're just their statement about it after like yeah and apparently yeah after um we had everything taken care of but we, how yeah how could you get us back though we don't understand what he was doing yeah. uh you, you're on your own buddy what the what were you doing, man? He's like, I was coming in. Man, I was trying to get one in. You're like, I thought y'all were in danger. You're like, no, man. We had it all taken care of until you start punching kids in the face. Now we're, everyone's in trouble. This wouldn't even have made the news. So that's all. You know, it wouldn't have made my picks if, you know, just two, if two kids getting arrested in the damn subway versus two kids get arrested and a guy punches yeah. two kids in cop, the face. Cop punches two teenagers, yeah. It's just great because it's in a crowd of people. So, like. You're like, oh, that looks hilarious. He comes out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> Stay out of large crowds of people. There's nothing but trouble in there. Yeah. Nothing but trouble in large crowds of people. So what else we got? That's all I got. Yeah, all right. Else. Well, uh, you want to get into the news worth knowing? We We're not hijacked this week. Right here. Oh, right on time. Yeah. So a uh, man allegedly cuts his finger off after a snake bite to save his own life. Yeah, I saw this. But Doc says it was really unnecessary. Yeah. Doctors say a man in China hacked off his own finger after he was bitten by a snake that he believed to be highly venomous. The man, identified as a 60-year-old named Zhang, reportedly claimed he was uh, bitten on his index finger by... Whoa, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the snake name. <laughs> it's a Chinese snake. I'll never meet him. Um, yeah, he was while he was working in the mountains. Uh, the species is found in southeastern China, as well in northern Vietnam and parts of Taiwan, and typically prefers shaded habitats and forests or among rocks and valley streams, according to Animal Diversity Web. While its venom can injure humans, it has also been used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and pain in tendons and bones. Not all bites are fatal, but the man allegedly heard that death could be instant, so he cut his finger off with a knife. Some saw shit. Yeah, some saw shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, that's what he told the doctor. It's like, I thought I was going to die, so I cut off my finger. Uh... Chengda, Yuan Chengda, head of dermatology at Hangzhou Hospital for of Traditional Chinese Medicine, said the man's actions were really unnecessary. Now, when a Chinese uh, hospital of traditional medicine says you shouldn't have done that, wow. That's what I was waiting to say. You, <laughs> yeah. were, if this was in America, I was like that. I mean, as soon as you said China, I was like, man, you're not going to go to the hospital in China. <laughs> All our doctors we get from over you you got the best medical care in the world over there. No, they don't, man. I'm just what you get. You, no, they don't. I'll, you anyway. would rather go to an Asian doctor. I'll tell you that. Maybe not in in, Asia, in America, but you that was the joke. Thanks anyway. Thanks for killing it. Yeah. Wah, wah. Uh, anyway, so the, this doctor says that it was really unnecessary. Then uh, they likely could have reattached his finger if he had brought it with him. Apparently, he just left it. Never gonna need that again. It's poisoned. It's already poisoned. <laughs> Don't you think the poison would have already... By the time you get a knife out, you think the poison would have gone from your finger, it, like, to your heart? You would have seen it. Do you turn black? Also... Mm -hmm. Well, if it was necrotic or anything. Here's the thing. Well, your veins, like, you know, not like yeah, the thing, but your veins will, like, puff up when yeah. you get the venom in there. It looks fucking gross. Um, here's the thing. Also, how gangster is it to cut off your own finger? You just did that? You just were like, yo, I got, you don't plan on getting bit by a snake. So, you know what I mean? In thinking, in your mind, panic mode, oh shit, I got bit by a snake. You're like, fuck it, I'm I, boosh. I, I gotta cut my finger off. Yeah, and you, just, no, just do it. You don't even, you have to not have thought about it. You were just like, fuck it, I gotta cut it off. And just like, Tch. who gets muscle memory for that? Like, oh my God. Why would you do that? You know, we could have took you to the hospital. He's just got his finger there. That's why everyone else dragged him in the car. Like, you need to stop making decisions at this point. We're taking you to the hospital, dude. <laughs> Fuck, you cut your finger? I got bit by a snake and I cut it off. You're the like, poison went right to your brain, bro. You made it worse? Yeah, uh, I got bit by a snake, so I cut it off. It's... So now you, you cut your... 
You turned a snake bite into a cut off finger. Ugh, let's go to this next story. Damn, that's some stupid shit. You, you hear about this uh, Al Baghdadi getting killed? Yes. This weekend? Uh, I, uh, when that news broke, uh, uh, I was on Twitter and I saw Ben Shapiro tweeted, ISIS? More like, is was. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought that was hilarious, so I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. <clears throat> but what I'm talking about here is uh, the Washington Post uh, put out like a um, like an obituary mm -hmm. uh, for Al Baghdadi, and they called him. I'm gonna get this get this straight. An austere religious scholar dies at 48 or something like that. It wasn't. He looked old as shit in the picture. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I guess they'd be running all the time. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about this article because uh, everyone's been making fun of the Washington Post for saying that, you know, this head of ISIS was an austere religious scholar. Right. You know, and so people have been, like, razzing him. I think I think there's a hashtag, uh, Washington Post obit or something like that, where people are just... Because having, they don't like him. Taking a piss I, on it. I guess they were trying to say he was smart to be, like, running it, I guess, because they had a lot of money. So I guess maybe that's where they were coming. I don't know. You know when you, when you write in something, I guess maybe and you you th you have a different thought and you don't you don't word it the way that you were thinking it. Maybe is what they were. I no, don't know. They're straight up pandering to appease Islam, and uh, that's the issue here. Is that um, people will make fun of Christianity yeah, all day long. Yeah. They'll make fun of it all day long. You know why? Because Jesus said, "Turn the other cheek." That's why. There are other religions in the world that don't say turn the other cheek. They say cut that fucker's head off because he drew a picture of Muhammad. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. That's the difference. That's, that's the what difference we were between, talking about. Yeah, that's earlier. the difference between a culture that has gone through an enlightenment, through a renaissance, and a culture that has not. Yeah. Anyway. But, you know, uh, yeah, these journalists are just like, oh, he, was a, he was a good man. He was an austere religious scholar. He never hurt anybody. <laughs> Leader of a, the most the thing, dangerous though, terrorist but, organization on earth. Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe I guess that maybe they're trying to say like we don't want to look like monsters. Maybe they're doing like that for media because you're like, oh, we ki we just killed somebody. But I think I I think we should have killed him. So like I'm one of those people. That's, but that's maybe it appeals to the other people who are like, oh well, you know we we had to. And we, you know, we, we killed him respectfully. And you're like, oh, you respectfully? Yeah, we sent a bomb into their fucking meeting. No, and he, the shit he out blew of himself him. up. Oh, did he? When he was cornered. Yeah, like a pussy. Oh, no. would you not, though? If you were that wanted, what do you think they I would don't know. Do if I had my kids around me, I probably wouldn't set off an explosive device. If, that I, but if you're the leader of ISIS. Even if I was the leader of ISIS, I wouldn't kill my children. With America. Do you, what do you think they're going to do to your kids, though? I don't care. What? Because you. I'd what? rather I'd rather the enemy kill them than I kill my own children. What happened? I understand what you're saying, 100. percent But what happened to Osama bin Laden's kids? I never heard about. You remember there was they they he didn't kill they didn't kill his whole family. He has like yeah. Sons there and shit. there were reports that um, uh, he used uh, uh, his kids as human shields, and that that wasn't true. No, um, but no, but I wasn't saying that. But he had kids after like still now like they don't like they're they have them somewhere. They didn't just let everybody like, "Hey, go live in Afghanistan." Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I'm sure they like captured or they probably. Or that's what I mean. That. So maybe that was his mind. Like last time they captured the guy, they took his face. Like I'd rather, you know, like those. That's radicalist. Well, I mean, I'd rather take you all with me than you to come. Even even a guy like Osama bin Laden has a cousin that's just a dumb mechanic and doesn't. No, I don't want no part in that, man. I just like fixing cars. Right. I'm talking <laughs> about the people they found on his compound. Though. There yeah. was a couple of them where they're like, you were here. They probably still had, they didn't just let those people go. I don't, yeah. I would assume. I don't think, yeah. yeah. I don't think they would. Um, if the, I mean, they could, I guess. They may right. Have. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I would never, like, I don't get why you, you shouldn't be able to make that decision for somebody else. So, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, the same reason it's horrible that this guy used his children as human shields. Right. It's the same reason I don't think we should imprison some kid who just had because of an accident of birth. My dad was Osama bin Laden or anything like that. I don't think that right. that's necessarily means you're going to become 
you know, uh, like Vito Corleone and Godfather. That's what I was going to say. That's what they're thinking. They're like, we, if we let you go, you're going to have, you're going to avenge it at some point. Vito Andolini. You have to, yeah, he's going to avenge your father in 20 (laughs) years. You're going to come back and kill me. Exactly. I mean, that's basically the plot of Godfather 2. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, I wasn't even planning on doing that. I was going to go to school on Tuesday and shit. My, you know, you killed my dad, motherfucker. I'm yeah. sad about it. Now now I make jihads all day. Yeah, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> that is, yeah, that's crazy to think about. But, mm-hmm. yeah, wild, wild west. Well, wild east. Wild east. <laughs> yeah. Wild, wild east. Um, Indiana else? resale store. Worker finds a massive stack of cash in a coat pocket. Gives money back to the owner. A $7,000 stack of cash is back in the hands of the rightful owner after an employee at an Indiana resale shop found it in a coat pocket and decided to return it. For the past two years, Jennifer Kimes has been a buyer at Plato's Closet Valparaiso about an hour from Chicago. She told Fox News... Uh, that about two weeks ago, she was going through her normal routine of inspecting clothes that she found uh, when she found cash inside a coat a man had dropped off. I put my hand in the pocket. I felt something. I pulled the money out. It made me panic a little bit. So I put it back in the pocket for a second. Then I took it back out of the pocket, ran over to the, put it in the register, and immediately called the owner of the store. Yeah, I get because he can lock it. Yeah, okay. Uh, she said she'd never found that much cash before. We found 50 cents, a dollar, chapstick, a little note, piece of gum. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But never 7K. Right. You know, so uh, Kimes uh, said she instinctively knew she wanted to return the money to the rightful owner. Did you know them or something? Um, They knew that that's drug money. Somebody, think, yeah, somebody's somebody, miss, gonna miss some that money. junkie stole somebody's with their drug dealer's jacket and didn't check the pockets and went and sold it for some money and then they was seven thousand that's my conspiracy theory scooby-doo's theory is what i'm calling them now it was six thousand dollars in hundreds and one thousand dollars in twenties yeah that's who had why would you have seven thousand dollars in your pocket and not know yeah. And also, why would you be giving your stuff to Plato's? You sell stuff at Plato's Closet. You don't give away your well, items there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people resale do resale. Somebody stuff. bought the jacket. For, they bought the jacket for a certain amount of money. So somebody was selling the jacket because they needed money, which is my conspiracy. Yeah, I think that sounds like a conspiracy theory. Yeah, because so why would you sell your jacket with seven thousand dollars? You don't need to sell that bad boy. Give it to Goodwill. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, she re- apparently returned the money the next day. Stupid. Yeah, stupid. Did you give that back? Seven K is a lot of money, man. It didn't. I don't feel like if the jacket was donated or whatever. Like I don't know. At that point, like, did you? If you didn't know it was in there, does it? Did you like? And also, that's why. What I'm thinking is, it wasn't your jacket. If you were selling a jacket, I don't think you had just seven thousand dollars in a pocket of a jacket. Like, let me get 20 bucks for this. Here's a, here's the thing though. I mean, uh, like I said before, it's like a large, large crowd of people, very dangerous situation. Avoid those if you can. Uh, also large sums of money, very dangerous to have in your possession. Cause why do you have that? Yeah. Seven K in cash is finding it and keeping it in many ways is like, uh, that scene in gone in 60 seconds where it's like, yeah, I found this car just sitting outside. It had the keys why? just in it. Yeah, and it's like you didn't think why, and it's like because it's a drug dealer's car, and he's got a you know ton of like now now we got to deal with some guys looking for us trying to kill us because right. someone stole his car and his stash, and so I mean, and that's what I would think. You'd be safe in that situation because I'm a third party though. I would have kept it because I would have been like, this is drug money, and also somebody else stole this coat, like just because it's here, like oh who checks the clothes? You're like there yeah. was it, like whoever sold this coat here probably took it out before they sold it here. Or, I mean, would you destroy, I got, would like, you just destroy or keep the coat? I got, like, brace. Oh, because if you're the one marking it, you don't even have to put yeah, it in there. But right. you do, yeah, you got to throw it away. And that'd be, never got that's that coat. shady enough for me. Plus, I mean, if I had seven, if I, I put would, 7K in my pocket at, that I found inside of a coat, I was a shop. If I'm working, working at Plato's Closet if, if I'm and I there. find $7,000, mm-hmm. Doug, I don't, you know, I don't know. That's right. So, I mean, I guess it's what went through their head. It's like, it's not that it's like 7K, nobody will miss it. 
It's like, no, people miss $7,000. That's why if you weren't mm-hmm. missing it and you didn't know, like, there's no way you'd get, like, somebody that yes. knew that this was in so here the gave que- this. Yeah. So somebody... the question is, do I want to die over $7,000? Right. Because people kill over much less. But, I mean, you're talking, I, we do, like, entertainment for a living. So, they're like, at Plato's Closet, would I steal $7,000? Hell yeah. If I found $7,000 at a show. I guess that would be why it would be different, too, because that would make sense to me. Like, one of these stupid fools was trying to bring money in here to look fancy during a show. So Pull this, out a wad. If so. Yeah, this does belong to somebody, I'm probably. Make, making it rain, fool. Yeah, but, you know, that's why. I get paid a good amount of money to do that. But if play this club, dude, you're making, what, 10 bucks, 20, 15 bucks? Dude, $7,000 is a life changer at that point. Yeah. Like you're like, yo, I can get my shit together. I could buy pay, a car. Bills, get on a car, yeah. You could buy a car with seven thousand dollars. You could buy a car with two thousand dollars. So you're like, mm. I could buy a car and still like pay off a bunch of bills. Dude, it yeah. would be one hundred percent morally right. I I one hundred percent yes, no. That's wrong. But yeah. would I in that situation? It's a tough call. That's what I mean. You'd have to be I there. would have to be in the situation mm-hmm. for me to tell you that I wouldn't though. That's why I wouldn't say that I would, how but sh- yeah, like how shitty my day has been going so far. Yeah. Did I want to quit the job anyway? How much do I need it? <laughs> how right. much could this help the you my shit? You yeah. know, like can I get away scot free with this? If you yeah. lost seven thousand dollars, you know what I mean? You'd be looking. Is it is it my fault though? That's the whole thing. You gave this coat in here. I didn't steal $7,000 from you. I found $7,000 while I was at work. So It's not you know, like stealing. I like <laughs> I can find a way sometimes where you like try to move more, it around more, to where more, you like Rubik's Cube it where you're like, I'm I, right on yeah, this I, way where yeah. you're like. Oh, so it's morally okay. Side of yeah. negative. But it's morally okay. But like, is it okay? You're like kind of. <laughs> Turn the knobs a little bit to where it seems right. This looks right. One side's right. It's the Rubik's Cube. One yeah. side's right. There are other, the, yeah, a couple the that are not. It's a mess. It's a mess. Some of them, one or two of them yeah. look right to You're me. You're getting bogged down in this metaphorical Rubik's Cube. You're still but, trying to solve it, aren't you? Um, <laughs> whether or not it's still $7,000. <laughs> like I, or... I created this fictional Rubik's Cube, but now I can't solve it. I'm busy. <laughs> no, you <laughs> All right, let's go on to this next story about a very convincing mask, apparently. Uh, Florida man dressed as Trump at a Halloween fair, allegedly punched in the face by a 14-year-old. Damn, kids are fucking savages. They are savage these what days. What the fuck? Yeah. Um, a Florida man showed her apparent, uh, her apparent disdain for President Trump when she allegedly punched a man who was dressed as the commander-in-chief at a Halloween fair over the weekend, according to authorities. The 14-year-old girl walked up to the man who was standing online. Online? In, you know, sometimes they'd be misreading. It must be a British chick. Nor, Nicole Dara, are you from England? Standing online. She was in queue. He was in the queue. <laughs> you know, standing in line with his family Saturday night for a haunted house at the Collier County Fairgrounds, and she punched him in the jaw. Uh, the girl then allegedly laughed and ran back to her group of friends. 14-year-old girls. Yeah. This was reported by the Naples Daily News. Uh, yeah, and they were, they cited the Collier County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the Trump fan told authorities that he approached the teen and asked her why she did that. And a deputy later questioned the 14 year old. She punched me. I'm going to go ask her why. Yeah. Sounds like a level headed Republican. Anyway. Why uh, would you do it? Oh, was it the mask? Yeah. That's how like you did it now. <laughs> oh, the. Did you know it was me? Probably or? the mask. Did you think I was really Trump or did you not know it was a mask? Or like, was this personal? <laughs> is, it about, is it about me or is it about Trump? Yeah, I was just really just wondering. I just have a lot of questions about what just happened. If you want to punch it, I'll give you the mask. You can punch that all day long. Why would you do this? Well, it was on my face, you know. Is this personal? <laughs> uh, and an investigator said that the sole motivation was to strike Trump mm. <laughs> and the county school system employee. Reportedly told officials the incident was filmed and posted to Instagram. Nice. Teenagers. Yeah, tell on yourself. The teen was charged with a misdemeanor. Mis- mis- yeah, right. You, your own, <laughs> you're your own prosecutor. Yeah. Yeah, the teen was charged with misdemeanor battery. Yeah, fools. <laughs> you put it on Instagram, dipshit. Yeah, no shit. Oh, man. That's hilarious. <clears throat> you got another story? I do. I do have another story. Okay. And uh, 
for those of you sensitive types out there, considering, you know, what we're talking about earlier in the show, the beginning of the show, uh, when I used hashtag roadkill, I was talking about this story. Right. If anything that comes after the news worth knowing, hashtag news worth knowing, it's about the news worth knowing. Right. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> Kansas man hits bass with his truck. Mm-hmm. How the hell you hit a fish? That's an excellent question. How do you, you hit? Pond? No. Um, William Myers thought he'd avoided a mess when uh, when a bird bumped into the front of his Ford F-150 and took off on the side from the side of the highway 281 outside of Hart Hartner, Kansas, then flew over the roof and apparently was unharmed. So he apparently hit a bird first. Well, a bird holding a bass had to be like a fucking pterodactyl in my that's, mind. That's that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he got home, he discovered he discovered that the fine feathered friend had left him a present. Present. There, sticking out of the grill of his truck, was the back end of a foot-long bass that the bird must have been carrying home for dinner. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a good size. Better than the yeah. catch. That you, that you, so I haven't caught something for. like that in two weeks. Yeah, right? What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, Myers told KWCH that folks look at him like he's lying when he doesn't. <laughs> it's like, I swear to God. I caught this fish from a, from a bird. But he took pictures of the fish in the crack grill before he removed it. That is the best fishing story ever. That's why I caught this one one foot bass on the front of my just driving. I'm so good at fishing. I wasn't even fishing. I caught a foot bass. <laughs> Jumped right up in my car. Yeah, just jumping in, man. That's how good I am at fishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh shit. Look, uh, uh, that would be the third grill he's had to put on his truck, because this isn't the first animal he's run into. Just the smallest. Yeah. Shit, if, if it's carrying a foot long, you got to imagine, that's a good size bird. That's like a good you, size bird, yeah. Most people don't realize some birds are a lot bigger because they're very high up in the sky, but yeah. if you can see it, like, this, you got to think about airplane perspective. Well, uh, the the turkey buzzers that are around here, um, they are huge. If you've ever been close to them, they are, they are yeah, huge. Yeah, I live by the woods. Oh, poof, yeah, you see them all the time. Poof. Yeah. You're like, what the, what is that? That's why it's like a uh, Game of Thrones dragon. Yeah, I saw a bald eagle the other day. That thing was fucking huge, too. Yeah. They are ridiculous. Four feet wingspan. Well, three, maybe. They're big, man. Hey, big. Way too big to be. That's why I don't trust birds. Oh, yeah. I, I hate birds. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, they're, they're little dinosaurs. The, yeah. um, what are you doing flying around up there defying gravity and shit? They, they're they get getting away from us. Everybody else. Yeah. That's, that's why they evolved into birds. They were getting away from us. Yeah. Because we, we got tired of being eaten by dinosaurs. So we started hunting them, you know, <laughs> and wearing their feathers. And, uh... They got, because dinosaurs probably had feathers. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know that. I do. I've heard that. And so um, they ended up becoming, they just said, well, well, we ended up like capturing a bunch of little ones and just breeding them and breeding them and breeding them until we had chickens and turkeys. Right. We've done <laughs> the that rest with of a them, lot they, of animals. Yeah. Though. That's what happened. Exactly. Happens, so. That's the point is that humans change the evolution of animals that they interact with. Talk about your dog. Where would dogs be? Without humans. Right. They would be wolves. Right. We have an entirely different name for what humanity has done to wolves. Yeah. 100%. I believe that. And same thing that happened to the dinosaurs. They're like, they're, we're all big and slow. We need to get smaller and get into the air. So they became domesticated. Yeah. <laughs> Until they invent bows and arrows. Yeah, right. <laughs> I agree with that. Do you have another story? I do. I do. But we have eight minutes left. So we'll kind of go slowly through this one no don't go because i want to say something if i have a second because can i put a news worth knowing that i just want sure one sure yeah go ahead um this weekend i just want to say stay classy dc because with the trump thing too how y'all gonna boo the president and then someone's gonna pull their boobs out too at the same damn game, at the World Series game, they the president came. They they did chant at him. I don't know what they were chanting, but yeah. they booed him and chanted at him. And then also, two people pulled the boobs out of the thing. And were like, first time World Series in D.C. Like, welcome to where we live. We like to party, I guess. Or overdo it, but stay classy, man. What the... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's why it's so hard for us as entertainers to do shows around here. You see, they're gonna boo the president, and then you gonna pull your boobs out while we're trying to do a nationally televised yeah, game. There's this uh, YouTuber that I oh, like. Man. I think she's cute as hell. Her name's uh, Sydney Watson, uh -huh. and uh, she's a conservative YouTuber. And she just re recently moved here from um, Australia to live in the DC area. Oh, wow. 
and stuff like that. And then she, uh, like, when she got up in the D.C. area, she was just like, I'm super surprised at all these liberals here. It's like, you didn't do any research about how liberal <laughs> D.C. is? Yeah. You should know that, um, you know? Um, and I, I kept giving her, like, comments on their videos, like, look, babe, you need to move south across the river. All right, first of all, you're going to save a shitload of money on rent every exit down you go. Uh, uh, secondly, yeah. you, you get down past, uh, I don't know, maybe Lorton, maybe Lorton, Newington, then you could start running into people who are actually conservative. Right. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Liberals infest cities. You, that's why there's all their crime there. Cause the liberals are letting criminals go. They're like, Oh, they're just a bad, you know, they give them a second chance. Everyone yeah. deserves a second chance. He murdered somebody and raped rape somebody else but hey yeah that's always what you don't want to do yeah i just thought it was funny because i was like both in the same game though i was like two different yeah. headlines from the same like our first time and yeah we were all excited last week first time we're, we're bringing it home and then you're like they booed the president chanted at him nah, and uh it, two girls pulled yeah, their titties show, out showing their ass yeah it was like like it's, pulled their it's, titties out it's like just bully. dc showing its ass and you're like hmm i mean you know sometimes uh you know sometimes we be doing uh, classy shit, but you know, uh, I don't know. Like, just to explain Sometimes. to you where we, we we don't do it here on this show. First time, uh, yeah, just as a unit. Come on, Northern Virginia, man. We don't look. <laughs> come up here. I, uh, All right, we got one more. Sorry. Yeah, I got this one. One last story. Uh, I like to end on a positive note because it's yeah. been a rough, been a rough episode. Hell yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, North Carolina man wins two hundred thousand dollar lottery prize. On his way to the last chemotherapy treatment. North Carolina man battling cancer won a $200,000 lottery prize on, his, on, on the way to his last chemotherapy treatment. Uh, Ronnie Foster of Pink Hill, North, Col North Carolina, uh, who has been battling colon cancer, said the winning lottery uh, said winning the lottery prize on the way to the doctor made his last cancer treatment a lot easier. WTVD TV reported. Uh, this is a quote. I was already happy because it was my last round of chemo. Uh, the station reported Foster, a retired Department of Transportation worker, said winning this made it my lucky day. Uh, Foster reportedly perspective. Yeah, perspective, bro. Uh, Foster reportedly uh, bought the lucky win it all scratch off ticket from a convenience store uh, called Shortstop at Beulahville, about an hour and a half from Raleigh. Uh, I bought a one dollar ticket and won five bucks, Foster said. Then I decided to trade it in for a five dollar ticket. At the last second, I decided to buy two tickets instead of one. Uh, he reportedly scratched the first ticket and didn't win anything. Then he scratched the second one, and he became a winner. I saw all those zeros, and I froze, Foster said. I didn't believe it until I gave it to the clerk at the counter to scan. When it showed go-to lottery headquarters, I started shaking. I couldn't believe it. Uh, the news outlet reporter reported Foster claimed his... Why would you scan it? Do you think you're going to get like $200,000 from, from the cash register? Yeah, from the cash register at 7-Eleven? Anyway. I think I'm it sorry, says from, on the back From the shortstop, rules. yeah. People don't read those. <laughs> they don't even scratch the games. They go and so they scratch the little code and scan the you code. You saw that much money? Yeah. That's when you're supposed to read the back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. The news outlet reported Foster claimed his prize Friday at the lottery headquarters in Raleigh and took home $141,000. $141,501 after required state and federal with tax withholdings. Foster said he plans to use some of the money to pay for his outstanding medical bills. I have good yeah. insurance, Foster added, but there are still some costs. This will make it a whole lot easier. I'm sure it will. So that's the thing, though. So that might be why it's his best day, because he's like, I'm done with the chemo, and now I can pay for it, so I'm not stressing right well, now. Well, here's, so. here's the real miracle of this story. Okay. It was his last chemotherapy treatment. Right. That means he's in remission. Mm -hmm. That means he's getting better. Right. That's the real miracle here. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah, two hundred thousand dollars is nothing compared to the miracle well, of people surviving cancer. But how much better he's going to be now? Because he survived cancer, and you're like, I, it put me in debt to survive. Oh, I'm certain. It put I'm me certain. in debt to survive cancer. So you're like, dude, did I want to survive this? And you're like, two hundred thousand. Like, yes. Yes, I'm about to be alive. Like, I, I thought I was about to be alive and just wanting to be, like, you know. I got $400,000 in debt. You're like, why'd you guys save me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I got to just spend all my time trying That's to pay true. you back and pay That's for true. my stuff. You're like, nope, not anymore. About to pay you back and go get my medicine and, you know, live, live a life. It's a new life. Absolutely. New money, new life. That's second life, dude. That's awesome. 
All right, so I guess we're here in the last two minutes of our show. Um, I want to I want to ask you again. If I I probably didn't mention this before, but I should I should ask you. It's like uh, I beg you, pray for um, Hill Hippie's family. Yes. Uh, uh, going through this horrible horrible time. Um. Uh, what else? I, f- I feel like I-, I have to mention this, but I don't want to say it like right after this, uh, right, right after what I just said. So um, please go to patreon.com slash shock monkey radio. I hate to feel like a whore, you know, with that, but I mean, this, that's, uh, that's how we have to operate here yeah. at shock monkey radio, uh, shock monkey, uh, patreon.com slash shock monkey radio. Um, you know, the, you, be- you can become an advertiser. You can hijack news worth knowing, or you can just become a patron. We'd appreciate it. Um, if we get any more information about um, uh, uh, coming events uh, in regards to the Hill Hippie, or if any, if like any kind of fun gets set up, we have to talk to his family and so forth to figure out what's going on. We're um, setting something up. Yeah, I'm sure so, we're going to set something yeah, up. Yeah. And so um, I would urge you to uh, watch my Facebook, the Shock Monkey Radio Redux Facebook page. Um, any information I get, I will be posting up there, and I'm sure there will be uh, other postings on our other social media sites for all of our shows here at FXBG Public Radio. Um, just go to fxbgpublicradio.com, and you can see all the shows and look for their uh, social media uh, online. I'm sure you'll find something for everything, and I'm sure pretty much every show on the station is going to be doing something uh, uh, for for the family of our beloved brother, Devin Morgan. Otherwise known as a hill hippie. Uh, it's seven o'clock. I'm the madman and I love you. I'm Nick as always, and we hope to see you next week, all of you. Mm-hmm.